unfortunately, in Canada and in BC, our courts have very limited options and opportunities to um, to deal with uh, somebody who is presenting with mental health and substance use concerns unless they meet the very high threshold of being not criminally responsible by reason of mental disorder and those are people who tend to be in an active state of psychosis at the time of their offense but for many people um, their mental health or substance use issue will be a contributing factor to their offending but they will end up um, being deemed responsible and put into the criminal justice system that is so ill-equipped to meet their needs. And so, you know, we gave the reference of the UK where, um, you know, in the UK, sentences are actually, sentencers are actually required by their guidance. If somebody is facing a prison sentence and they're suspected to have a mental health concern, they have to review a medical file and they need to consider alternatives because you know, the person might, there might be some moral culpability issue, but there's also the the recognition that a prison sentence is uh, disproportionately harmful for somebody who has a serious mental health condition because they're not going to have their, their needs met in that setting. So then the question remains, well, where are they going to have their needs met? Well, right now, nowhere, because we actually don't have a good, robust alternative system within the mental health system to, uh, to provide long-term uh, stability and supports and the rehabilitation needs that, that people have. And so, um, yeah, that was one of the things that we discussed that I think is, is a major part of it, but we also have to build out that continuum of mental health care because even if we make those changes within the court system or within our legislation, we still have to have those services available for people to go to, and right now we don't.